Okay, so you're a health practitioner and you're at a pivotal moment where you're considering, do I continue focusing on my practice, brick and mortar, or do I look at, what do I, how can I go virtual? How can I go, how can I go virtual? Maybe have a bit more location independence, not be tied to a physical practice. And in this quick little video, I wanna walk you through some of the thinking to help you make that decision. Just in case you don't know who I am, my name is Uriel Kame, founder of Healthpreneur. I'm currently on my bike, getting in a workout, and I figured, hey, why not do this at the same time? Okay, so with that said, how, what do you do? You're at a point now, and maybe with everything that's happened with COVID, it's, it's really had you consider your options because you've probably been on lockdown for a certain amount of time, maybe you've reopened, maybe you haven't, depending on where you live, and it's starting to get you questioning about what does the future have in store? Do I really wanna continue doing what I'm doing? Um, so I wanna give you a bit of perspective here, okay? So here are the options. Um, it depends, it really depends, and there's no right or wrong answer. Because I believe fundamentally that it's easier to grow a brick and mortar practice. It is, and the reason for that is because when people walk into your door, there's a massive amount of trust that is built toe to toe. That trust is harder to establish in a virtual setting. So with that said, I mean, I've built mul like two multiple seven figure businesses, which helped over half a million people exclusively online. So, I mean, I know what I'm doing when it comes to virtual and I'll tell you like, obviously it can be done, but you have to understand that the trajectory is gonna take a little bit longer because there's new skill sets. You have to understand the landscape. You have to improve your marketing capabilities, your selling skills. Not that you have to be salesy and pushy, but being able to have conversations over the phone with potential patients or clients that naturally are gonna be a little bit more skeptical than if they walked into your practice. So I'm not saying one or the other is better. I just wanna give you a couple things to think about. So number one is a brick and mortar is generally gonna be easier to build quickly because you already have it, you already have momentum, you already have a patient base, you have a footprint. People can walk in, you can leverage existing assets, and typically it's gonna be a faster way to grow than if you started something completely new online. So that's the first consideration. Second consideration is that, okay, well if brick and mortar is technically easier to grow, why wouldn't I just do that? Again, one more thing to consider here is, what is your overhead, right? Are you paying, you know, we have clients that are paying five, eight, 10, 15,000 a month just in their lease for their, for their clinic. And that's something, you know, when COVID hit and people are locked down, you're still paying that. And considering that this is gonna be around for a while in some way, shape or form, do you need to continue paying that amount of money for a space potentially that you can't even use? So the overhead side of things is a consideration. Now, the third component is looking at what type of practitioner you are. If you're a massage therapist, if you're a chiropractor, if you're someone who does most of your work hands-on, then you have to ask yourself, well, do I have to work in person with people? Like, do I have to physically touch them? If you're a massage therapist, the answer is probably yes. If you're a chiropractor, the answer is obviously probably yes. If you're a physical therapist, etc. And so those are some considerations, okay? Now, with that said, again, like if you're a dentist, yeah, like you kind of have to see people in person, right? Like you can't do virtual dentistry. Now with that said, we've helped over a thousand practitioners over the past five years grow their brick and mortars and their virtual practices. And I can tell you that a significant portion of our clients are chiropractors who have just gotten sick and tired of trading time for money and being tied to their brick and mortar. And they came online to exclusively work virtually with, with patients who are outside of their geographic area. So it's definitely doable. Even though we have acupuncturists, we have massage therapists who've gone 100% virtual. And obviously your scope of practice changes. Like you're not gonna massage people over the internet. You're not gonna, in, you're not gonna use acupuncture virtually. So what you have to think about is, 
am I more than what I do with my hands? And the answer to that is yes, because what people are gonna pay you for is what's up here. You have protocols and knowledge and understanding of the human body and healing that go beyond what you do with your hands. So I'm not, I'm not discounting hands-on therapy, but I'm saying if you wanna go virtual, then you have to understand, you have to think of another way of helping people. One of our mastermind members, Ryan, um, they do $1.5 million a month right now, and he's a chiropractor. And we have a lot of people that are like, there's no way, I can, that's, there's no way that's possible. Well, exactly, it's not possible. Well, it's less likely to do that kind of revenue in a clinic if you're just treating patients and adjusting them all day long, but that's not what they do. They gave up their practice, moved online, and now they understood, well, they have the functional medicine background as well. So they understood that they had a really good expertise in helping people with thyroid issues and Hashimoto's, and that's their market. And they've been able to help thousands and thousands and thousands of mostly women who've dealt with that. And that was a decision they made. They said, listen, like we could continue building the brick and mortar, we could, but the opportunity online, at least for them, made a lot more sense. So I just wanna give you some perspectives. I'm not saying one or the other has to be the right way, right? Just some things to think about. Another thing to consider is your lifestyle. Sorry, I'm, 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 working, I'm working here. It's been, a, it's been a good ride so far, so I'm sweating. Thank you for joining me. So another thing to consider is your lifestyle. Do you want to be tied down to one location? If that's, if that's, you know, if that's fine with you, then that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. However, a lot of people come to us because they don't want to be in that situation and they have had enough of their clinic, they want to get rid of it, and they want more location independence. So one of our clients, Stacy, had a clinic in Toronto and within two months of working with us, she sold the clinic and she wanted to do that because one of her biggest values was travel. So Toronto is pretty brutal in the winters and instead of her being tied to her clinic in the winters, now she travels to Florida and is able to spend three, four months in warmer weather. And she's able to see patients in a slightly different manner by doing so virtually. So that's a consideration, is that if you wanna go and live somewhere else in the winter time, or you wanna have the ability to take off and not be tied down to you being physically present, then you have to consider virtual. Or, I'll get to the or in just a second, because the virtual is probably the, you know, one of the smartest ways to gain that type of freedom. Like personally for me, I spend about four to five months out of the country every year. I live in Toronto as well, but you know, we spend most of our time in the crappier months in places like Australia where I can still run my business and help a lot of our clients, all of our clients, um, because I'm able to do all this stuff virtually, okay? So I mentioned an or. A lot of, so I wanna, I just wanna mention like one pitfall that I've seen is that many practice owners, especially when COVID hit, they said, okay, well, I've been thinking about virtual and then COVID hit and it was like, yep, I gotta go virtual. And one of the questions I asked them, like what I ask anyone is the following is, and I mentioned this as the, the first point earlier was, it is easier to build a virtual, sorry, it's easier to build a brick and mortar. It's easier to ramp it up very quickly than it is to start from scratch and go virtual. So does it make more sense to double down on your brick and mortar and really ramp it up and build the right infrastructure operationally and team-wise so that you can step away from being in the business all the time? So even if you did nothing virtually, but you just built a better operationally sound business that doesn't rely on you, that's a really important consideration. Because as I mentioned, it's easier to build and accelerate what you're already doing than starting from scratch and building out a whole online component to what you do. Again, Neither one is right nor wrong, but just something to consider because if you already have an asset like your brick and mortar, like a team, and we can help you clean that up and improve it, that might be the better place to start. Because then if you want more freedom, 
you don't need to be in the clinic five days a week. Maybe it's two days in a week and you have three days off to do whatever else you wanna do. Or if you wanna take your family on a trip for a month or a week or whatever it is, you have things set up where that's, that's possible. And in that case, perhaps you have no virtual component as an option. So that's one thing to think about as well. So it's like, instead of just escaping the practice and going virtual, you double down on the practice, you improve it, we get things really, really cranking as a business should, not relying on you as the sole practitioner, and now you can step away a little bit more. So those are a couple considerations when it comes like, when you're looking at virtual versus brick and mortar. And the one more, the one final thing I'll mention to this is sometimes, and very often to be honest, actually like most often, it doesn't have to be either or, it can be and. So let's say you run a brick and mortar, let's say you're a hands-on massage therapist or a chiropractor, there's nothing stopping you from having a virtual component. Because here's the reality is that the way most practices run is patient comes in, patient sees practitioner, they do the session and then that's it. When do you wanna book in next? Oh, I'll come in in two weeks or one week or later this week. There's no, what we call a prescription plan. There's no plan that gives the roadmap of what's to come for the, for, the, um, for the patients. And I've been on the receiving end of this as a patient for physical therapy, massage therapy, chiropractic. And I'm just like, please sell me a better option. Shoulder issues from tennis, go see my physio, see him whenever I want. I'm like, that doesn't help. I wanna go, I wanna go see him in person and maybe between sessions, he gives me an online portal that contains trainings and videos and various things that I can do on my own when I'm in my gym, at home, to improve range of motion, strength, flexibility, all that stuff. And then when I come back in for a session and it's more hands-on, I can do things with him that I can't do virtually. So the hybrid consideration I think is incredibly valuable and something to consider because the nice thing is that you don't have to necessarily get new patients who've never heard of you, although you definitely can do that. However, you can leverage your existing patients and better serve them online in conjunction with what you might be able to do with them in person, okay? And I said that was gonna be the last thing, but here's the last thing. Final thing I'll mention is how do you get more patients? How do you get new patients? In a brick and mortar, it's very simple. You mark it within your local radius, let's say five to 15 miles, people come in. We obviously teach a very specific methodology where you have an, what we call an NPO, a new patient offer, that then moves them into a core offer to best help them achieve outcomes. But what if you have a virtual practice? What if you don't want people coming into your brick and mortar? Well, you're gonna, in most cases, what we would suggest is gonna run Facebook ads. It's the smartest and easiest way for any business, okay, to get fast traction. If you're trying to grow organically, like free, like posting on Instagram and, you're, and a blog, it's never gonna happen, I promise you that. So what you do is you run Facebook ads and you're gonna move people into eventually a conversation with you over the phone. Now, the thing to remember is that these people have never heard of you before. They have no clue who you are. There's no trust. There's no likability. There's no none of that stuff. There's this, this essence of like, are you even a real person? Are you a real business? Or are you just another like internet scammer? So the virtual side of things going to cold audience who's, who've never heard of you is going to be a little bit more high resistance compared to if you targeted locally and brought people into your brick and mortar. And I say that just so that you're fully aware of the journey. It's like if I jumped on this bike and I said, okay, that's gonna be a piece of cake, I'm not gonna sweat. And then all of a sudden I'm sweating. I'm like, whoa, whoa, what the heck's going on, right? Now I say that because building an online business is very challenging compared to a brick and mortar, which is still not easy, but easier because of that trust factor. But again, we are the best in the industry at helping practitioners do the virtual side as well as the brick and mortar. And we've helped thousands of practitioners go virtual. And because I've been doing this for what, since 2006, 
I've done everything. I've done the blogging. You know, we had a blog that got 1.5 million visitors a month, a YouTube channel of almost 300,000 subscribers. I've done all that stuff, right? And I know what takes a long time and what's gonna produce the fastest results. And I say fastest results, not in the sense that it's gonna be easy, but what is the simplest path to scale the mountain? And that's what we can help you do as one of our clients. So the reality is that there are new skills. You have to be better at marketing and messaging and having conversations that are gonna get people to say yes, to, to know how to build that bond and trust with them in a virtual capacity where you may never touch them in person. And these are things that we can, I mean, this is stuff we've done for, for many years, and this is stuff that we can likely help you with. So anyways, I wanted to shoot this video just to give you some, some things to consider. Um, and not to say that you have to do brick and mortar or you have to do virtual and it's one or the other, or one is better than the other, but it's really gonna be dependent upon you and your lifestyle, what you deem to be important, where you feel is the biggest opportunity. And again, we'll talk about this, you know, when we, when we speak with you on, um, in a practice growth session, we can give you more clarity on this, but I wanted to give you this video ahead of time so you could start doing some of the thinking because we'll certainly give you more clarity, but at the end of the day, it's, it's really your choice, right? And I wanted to give you both sides, uh, both perspectives, so you can make the best decision for your business um, as much as possible. So anyways, hope this video makes sense. Hopefully it finds you well. We look forward to serving you and I'm gonna keep on cranking it out here. See you soon.